Hello and welcome to Gecko Online. Today we'll be talking about lessons from the past. We'll unravel the mysteries surrounding some of the world's strangest monuments and the fate of the people who built them. In the process, we'll find out the costly mistake they made in their relationship with their environment and how we can avoid making the same mistake. Even though this story starts a thousand years ago, the lessons from this story are as relevant today as they were back then. Because people are people, no matter what time we're from, and some of our habits don't change. Sometimes we hear people say, of course it would be nice to save the trees, but we have more important things to worry about right now, like the economy. Sounds reasonable. We all know how important the economy is because we know what it's like to not have enough money. We saw that during the financial crisis when so many people were out of work and could barely afford to pay their bills. But what about an environmental crisis? What would it be like to not have enough trees or enough clean water and natural resources? Would having a strong economy be enough to solve our problems, even if the environment were in crisis? It's a difficult question, and even the experts disagree. It's hard to know which is the correct answer. But with 7 billion people on the planet today, it's critical that we know the real answer so that we can make the right decisions in the way we value environmental concerns. Fortunately, we can turn to history for answers to these questions because many societies before us have confronted the same question. The people living on a little place called Easter Island confronted this question also. So let's take a look at their story and see if there's something there to help us with our decision making regarding the environment. Our story starts about a thousand years ago on a tiny dot in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, 3,500 kilometers away from anywhere, called Easter Island. Although tiny, this island is famous because of the hundreds of giant stone heads found all over the island. The truth about how they got there and the people who lived there has been a mystery for centuries. Only recently, the truth of what really happened there has been uncovered. In the beginning, there were no people living there. The whole island was covered in dense rainforest with many different species of trees and plants. But about a thousand years ago, Polynesians stumbled across the island in their boats, and when they arrived, they found a beautiful paradise rich in natural resources. So, of course, they decided to stay. The island was an ideal place to live because it received lots of rain, and the island also had very fertile soil, so it was very easy to grow crops. With such great conditions, the Easter Island people soon raised families, built villages, and grew crops. Gradually, their population started to grow. Archaeologists who first studied Easter Island could not believe that so few people living on such a tiny island could possibly have constructed the hundreds of enormous statues found all over the island. The Easter Island people carved and erected the statues themselves. Nobody quite knows who it was that first came up with the idea or why he decided to do it, but the idea became very popular. They carved the statues from the volcanic rock on the mountain. Then they had to move these hundreds of giant statues all over the island. Pretty difficult since they had no machines, but the Easter Islanders were clever. They moved the statues by cutting down the trees and using the logs to roll the statues across them. The logs would wear down as they moved the statues, so it took a lot of trees just to erect one statue. As the years went by, the Easter Islanders continued building statues. Their statue building technology advanced, and soon they were building enormous statues that required hundreds of men and even more trees to move. As they built bigger and bigger statues, they became more and more prosperous, and soon, people started to think that building more and bigger statues was the real cause of their prosperity. As the population of Easter Island grew, they needed to cut more and more trees to build more homes and clear land for farms, but building statues required more trees than ever. At Easter Island's peak, the population reached 20,000 people. By this time, it was clear that changes were happening to the island's environment. As the Easter Islanders built more statues, the forest started to disappear. Easter Island is small, so everyone could see what was happening. Perhaps they worried that they would run out of wood to build statues and homes, but the danger they faced was even greater than they realized. The forests of the island were more than just a resource. 
they were supplying essential services that the Easter Islanders weren't aware of. The trees were providing three services on Easter Island. Trees have hundreds of kilometers of roots that hold the tree to the ground and keep the soil in place. The forest soil is created over hundreds or even thousands of years as trees and plants thicken the soil layer with dead leaves and plants. This soil in turn provides the nutrients that the trees need. Soil in the forest holds a lot of water, and the shade from the trees keep the forest cool, so the air in the forest is humid. This humid air attracts rain. That's why it rains frequently in the forest and never rains in the desert. So when you put all these things together, it forms a cycle. Rain waters the tree roots. Tree roots hold the soil. Soil supplies nutrients to the tree and trees attract rain. But what happens when the trees are removed? When a tree is cut down, the roots die. When the roots die, there is nothing left to hold the soil. The rain washes away the soil. With no trees and soil, the air loses humidity, so the rain stops. So now we understand what was really happening on Easter Island. But the people of the island couldn't see that. From their perspective, they only saw that the crops were not growing as well as before, and as a result, their economy was doing poorly. Since the Easter Islanders already considered statue building as the cornerstone of their economic prosperity, in a last-ditch attempt to revive the economy, they raced to build even more statues. Since there were only a few trees left to move the statues, they raced to cut down the last of the trees. And that's when they cut down the very last tree. Now Easter Island is very small and when you stand on the highest part of the island you can actually see the entire island. So when they cut down the last tree they knew it was the last tree. As there were no more trees left the rains came less and less frequently until the rivers dried up. The rains that did come gradually eroded the fertile soil washing it into the sea to be lost forever. With steadily worsening soil and declining rainfall, the crop returns diminished to the point where Easter Island's economy collapsed altogether. In the end, on Easter Island, they were left with very little food to eat, very little water to drink, no wood to build fires to keep them warm in the winter, no wood to build houses, and worst of all, no wood to build boats, so no one could leave trapped in a place they could not escape, and with too few resources to go around, Easter Island civilization broke down in wars over what little remained. In an effort to salvage the last prosperity by taking it away from others, they even toppled each other's great statues until there was really nothing remaining of the great civilization that they had built. When the survivors were finally discovered by explorers in ships 300 years ago, the wars and starvation had killed so many of the Easter Islanders that only a few hundred remained from the peak of 20,000 people. The question that haunts us, from the top of Easter Island, you can see the whole thing. So they knew what was happening. Why didn't they act before it was too late? This question becomes especially important when we think about the many parallels between Easter Island and modern society. We share growing population and limited resources. Like the Easter Islanders, we have nowhere else to go. But today, we are also experiencing an environmental crisis. As on Easter Island, we are experiencing deforestation today, with half of the world's original forests already gone, and at current deforestation rates, one quarter of the remaining forests gone in the next 50 years. As you'd expect, we are also experiencing soil erosion, with soil eroding on the world's farmland 10 to 40 times faster than it is created. Of course, there are also differences. Today we have advanced technology, but technology can cause problems just as well as it can solve them. If the Easter Islanders were able to devastate their environment with only a few stone tools and their own muscle power, how much worse could we do with the powerful technology that we have today? Because of advanced technology, we can catch every last fish in the sea. Today, fish stocks are depleted with 70% of the world's fisheries fished at or beyond capacity. Our advanced technology also causes our enormous energy demands, which we supply by burning fossil fuels. 
This accelerates climate change with an expected increase of 2 to 6 degrees by the end of this century. Because of globalization, international trade, airlines, and the internet, all countries around the globe share resources and affect each other. Just as the fates of Easter Island's people were all connected, so were those of all the people on Earth. When the Easter Islanders ran into trouble, they had no other place to go, and likewise, if we allow the environmental problems on Earth to become insurmountable, we will also have no other place to go. Fortunately, we have good reasons to be optimistic about our ability to prevent and solve environmental problems. We can look to history to see why the societies that came before us failed or succeeded, and we can learn from their mistakes. By figuring out why the Easter Islanders failed to act before it was too late, we can find out how to ensure that we can prevent and solve environmental problems before it's too late for us. In the next lesson, we'll answer this important question from Easter Island and uncover the surprising truths it reveals about solving sustainability challenges.